You know, I love interviewing people. I love selecting people and hiring people, especially for the senior and CEO jobs. Welcome to this real talk on acing very common interview questions. So tell us about yourself. Tell us about a time you failed. Or tell us about a mistake you've made and a conflict you had with a colleague. So where do you see yourself in five years? And today I will take you behind the scenes because I have hired a lot of people from junior positions to really senior positions like the CEO of an organization. And I'm gonna tell you why us interviewers actually ask you these questions, what we want to hear and what some bad and some really good answers would look like that you should pay attention to so that you can ace all of your interviews in the future. Morning, morning, my dear wingwoman and wingman, and welcome back to The Wingwoman Show. If you ever struggled with answering interview questions, then you are definitely not alone. We got a lot of questions over the past weeks from our risers, so from the alumni who've been through our Wingwoman Academy, about interview questions and how you actually answer them. And today I wanted to pick a few and actually tell you why interviewers ask you these questions and what some bad, some mediocre and actually excellent answers look like. So let's get started with the first very common question that you will hear. What do you answer when you get asked? Tell us about yourself. So tell us about yourself is a very popular starter question for interviewers because they think that it's a good one for you to warm up with and that you can't really go wrong with that question. Which is not true. People give really bad answers to this question. Before I come to the good and the bad answers, I just quickly want to tell you what interviewers really want to know when they ask you this question. Tell me about yourself. And sometimes the tell me about yourself is a variation so sometimes people might ask you so why did you apply to this job or what brought you here the key thing that I want to know as an interviewer is do you actually really want this job and do you seem to be the right type of person who deserves this job so you see that tell me about yourself actually isn't about you it's about me wanting to figure out if us two we are a good fit so let's look at a bad, at a mediocre and a great answer to the question, tell me about yourself. Well, why am I here? You know, I really liked my last job, but my contract came to an end and then I had to search for something new and, you know, this looked really interesting. Mm -mm. So why is that a bad answer? Because me as an interviewer, I want to appoint somebody who really wants to be here, especially when you want to get into a leadership position or into a top position like a CEO position. Because the higher you rise up, the more responsibility you are taking over and the less your job will actually be a nine to five job. And you need to have people there who really, really want to get up every day and do this job. Also for leaders, you want to have people who really are on fire when they talk about this job in this organization because they will need to represent the organization to the outside world and importantly if you are a leader you need to lead the people around you and the people and your teams they can actually smell if you are not enthusiastic and if you don't want to be here and then they ask themselves well, why should I care if my leader actually doesn't really care that much and isn't really giving it his or her best? So you want to show in your answer, especially at the start of the interview, that you absolutely freaking want to be there. And actually, after the interviews are over, the interviewers or the selection committee, they will come together and they will talk to each other about whether this candidate really wanted the job. And I've heard some candidates say, nonsense like well you know i held back and i just pretended that i didn't want the job that much or i even hinted that i might actually be wanting another job more because it's a bit like at a high school dance you know when you kind of want to get a partner you shouldn't be too easy to get and you want to seem a bit you know distant mm -mm. don't try to be distant in an interview especially when it's for a leadership position you have to show that you absolutely want to be there. So let's look at what a mediocre, kind of okay, but not great answer to this question. Tell us about yourself or tell us about your journey. Tell us why you are here. Tell us how you got here would actually look like. 
and that's something that a lot of candidates also do. So I decided to study and then I changed from this company into this job and now I'm here. If you are just repeating your CV, it's pretty likely that my thoughts will go somewhere else, that I won't really get the key point why you actually want to be there or that I'm so bored at the end of your answer or that I might even think that you consider me unprepared and that I haven't really read your CV. Believe me, if I'm in the room interviewing you, I am prepared, I have seen your CV, you don't have to tell me in detail. So let's look at what excellent candidates who do a great job at answering this question actually do in an interview. So the excellent candidates, they actually don't start with themselves, they start with me as their audience. And if you've been in the Rise Academy, go back to the toolbox, to voice week, and you will be an expert at that already. That when we talk to other people, when we want to pitch, when we want to pitch ourselves for a job, we don't start with ourselves, we always, always, always start with getting to know our audience. And the same applies to an interview. So as a first step, think about who your audience is, what they stand for and what they care about. And then you tell me something about yourself that shows that you also care about the same thing and you want us to be on this journey together in the future to make a difference. So for example, if you apply to a car company that wants to build great cars, then the answer to the question, tell me about yourself, should be something where you show that in the past you already cared about cars, you already had a passion about cars, and now you come here so that you can bring your passion to this organization. Or if you want to apply to an organization that fights for free internet, tell me about something that you did in the past that shows me that you are passionate about being a fighter for the free internet and that will, for me as an interviewer, show me that you and I, we kind of care about the same thing and if we hire you, you will advance the things that we care about and that our organization stands for. Okay, so then let's get to the next tricky question a lot of you worried about. Tell us about a time when you failed. I personally love this question and if you ever get interviewed by me, I will definitely ask you this question or a variation of this question like Tell me about a time when you've made a mistake, when you've had a conflict, when you were in a very challenging situation. I will probably walk you through a lot of scenarios where shit hits the fan and where you really need to firefight very hard. Why do interviewers actually ask this question? Because we want to know and to be sure and to build trust that you can actually deal with no matter what work life will throw at you in the future. So when we ask this question, what we want you to show us is that you have been in challenging situations, so it wouldn't be the first time for you. We are very interested in seeing that you are reflective, that you are a person who really learns and is keen on learning from mistakes so that you don't make the same mistake multiple times. And we also want to see that you are somebody who takes over responsibility for mistakes, for things that go wrong, for the actions of yourself and your team, because that will be another very important thing that we need to have you do once we give you the job. So let's look at a bad, at a mediocre and a great answer to the question. Tell me about a time when you failed. You know, I actually never really failed at anything. When you say that I as an interviewer hear, well, this person hasn't really had enough experience. Or I hear, this person isn't honest with me. Or I hear, well, this person is certainly not very reflective because everybody makes mistakes, everybody has failed with something. So, you know, not a great candidate to choose. Another bad answer would be, you know, with this problem, I mean, it wasn't really my fault. I just had really bad bosses and, you know, they really didn't know what they wanted to do. Actually, like this whole organization, I really wouldn't recommend anyone working for them. Very important, do not gossip. Even if you had annoying, incompetent colleagues or bosses in the past, do not present it like that. And that is very important because if you start gossiping about people you've worked with in the past, the thing that I hear and remember as an interviewer is, you like to gossip about your bosses and colleagues. 
And in the future, you will probably also start gossiping about me or about the organization. And I can't hire somebody who is actually doing that. So let's look at what a good solid answer would look like. A good solid answer to this question, have you ever failed with something, would be that you choose an example and you basically do three things. You explain what the problem and situation was. You explain what you did back then to actually resolve it. And you can talk about the things you did well and the mistakes that you've made. And then thirdly, you want to talk about the lessons that you have learned. Totally decent answer and fine, but I want to show you now what an excellent answer would actually be. The excellent candidates with an excellent answer, they actually start in the future and then they work back to the past. So what that means is the first thing that they do is they think about what is the job I want to get in the future and what kind of responsibilities come with it and what kind of conflicts could I encounter. So for example, you might want to take over leadership responsibility and then you might have conflicts with your team or with other leaders in the organization. Or if you want to get into a CEO position, you have to work with the board, with your bosses. So there might be conflict and failure and mistakes in working with the board. And then what these candidates do is that they actually work back from these future problems, future scenarios to where they have been in the past or where they are now and then they select examples from the past that actually speak to the situations that they might encounter in the future. So if you in the future might encounter a problem with colleagues or with you know people in your team, try to select something from your past that is actually as close an example as possible to that. Or if you want to apply for a CEO position and you want to talk about a conflict with the board, see how you can actually find an example from your past where you had to deal with very senior people and what you've learned from that that you could apply to this future role. In short, when we ask you, tell us about a time when you failed or tell us about a mistake you've made or a conflict with a colleague, you can be very deliberate about which examples you actually want to use and ideally you choose examples that are as similar as possible or at least that have learnings that you can apply to future scenarios and you want to talk about these future scenarios and you can even say in an interview, well, this is what happened in the past and I can imagine that a similar situation might occur in the future and you see, this is how I would deal with it. And in that situation, you actually reassure me as an interviewer that you are prepared for the challenges and the problems that will lie ahead if I actually hire you. Yeah? Okay, let's come to the third question. Where do you see yourself in five years? So the reason why interviewers ask this question is partly to get to know you, but even more importantly, we want to figure out if you are actually still the right fit in five years time and if we can actually help you get to where you want to be. So again, it's not really a question that is about you. It's a question about whether this year is going to work if we actually hire you. And different interviewers will actually have different opinions of where you and this relationship between you and us as an organization should be in five years. There are people who fall into the stay forever camp who basically expect that when they hire somebody, this person will stay with them for, you know, the next few decades. Then there are people in the change camp, which I'm certainly also part of, who believe that change is actually a good thing for both the leaders and the organizations. So when I hire senior leaders or also CEOs, I basically expect them to be with us for maybe five years, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit less. But then it's often time for this person to move on either into another position or into another organization. Also because for the organization that I'm hiring for, change is actually a good and an important thing. That said, there are some tips to help you create a great answer to this question, where do you see yourself in five years? And I want to give you two tips in particular. The first tip is ask the interviewers questions before you actually go into the interview. Why do so few people actually do that? I'm always surprised about that. And if candidates ask questions before the interview, the questions are often about organizational things like 
When will the interview take place or how many rounds will there be? And with these questions, I will very likely refer you to the HR team or to the headhunters that we hired to actually pre-select. If you want to get to me as the interviewer, you would need to ask questions like, I would like to know more about the strategic priorities for the next years so that I can see if I'm a good fit for this organization or the organization is a good fit for me. And you should really ask this question even if you are applying for a more junior position or if you are applying for a senior position. It is very important for you to know what the other person considers to be success in a few years time. And depending on what I'm looking for, you will need to adapt your answer to where do you actually want to see yourself in five years? Because this question isn't really about you. This question is about us and whether we are a good fit for each other. And I ideally want you to want to be in a place in five years where I also want to be. Which leads me to the second tip to answer this question in a really good way. My second top tip for you if you answer where you see yourself in five years is that you don't just talk about yourself in five years, but you talk about yourself, your team and the organization. Why is that important? Because, especially when I'm looking for a leader, I'm not really just looking for you as an individual, I'm looking for your ability to lead a team to success and to lead the whole organization to success. And I as an interviewer, you know what? I am also a human being and a lot of people in interviews forget about that. As an interviewer, I'm a human being and I also want to be part of a great journey. So if you can show me where you are at the moment and where you want to be in five years and that there's space for other people on this journey and other people will benefit from this journey, amazing. I have so much more reason to actually hire you. So as you answer this question, tell me about where you see yourself inside this organization, what you will have achieved, what you will have done for your teams, how you will have lifted up and trained up your teams, what kind of new things you will have brought to us as an organization so that we succeed together. If you can do that, that is actually an excellent answer to this question. And you can still obviously throw in things about your personal development. And I might ask you that as an interviewer. For you personally, what do you want to achieve? What do you want to learn? How do you want to grow? If you talk about these things, it also signals to me, this person hasn't learned everything and that's always the case for all of us. This person still wants to learn, wants to grow, is reflective about the things that he, she or them can and cannot do. And you can even throw in the weird kind of personal thing like, you know, in five years time, I want to have done my first skydiving exercise or skydiving lesson. If this is a thing that is on your bucket list and that you want to do. The key lesson here is, and it's actually the key lesson for all of the question and all of the answers that we've discussed just now, the key lesson is that when we as interviewers ask about you, all of these questions aren't actually just about you, but they are about us and you know whether we are a good fit for each other. So start always, always, always with who your audience actually is, what they want, what they need, what success means for them, and that will really help you to work back towards your answers and select from your CV and from your rich experiences which examples you actually want to give in the interview. Super, that's it for today. I know you had more questions. For example, some of you asked, what do I answer if I get the question, what are your weaknesses? Or what do I say when I get asked, how much money do you expect to have for this position? Which is still very common in a lot of organizations and especially for senior positions that people ask you, how much money do you expect to make or do you want to have? So all of those questions, we will cover them in detail in our RISER alumni sessions. So in your alumni sessions that you have coming up, if you've been through the RISE Academy, we will talk through all of these additional questions and your individual situations. So look forward to that and bring all of your questions there. But for all of you who haven't been in the RISE Academy, well, firstly, we would love for you to be there at some point. And for now, we also would love to have your comments and questions. So leave them in the comment section or message us on social media so that we can, you know, help you with those questions and do another video on some of those. Now it's time to go out and go be a kick-ass leader. Be brave, be kind, aim high because this world needs you. It needs your talent, your potential, your fire unleashed and unlocked. Cheers and I cannot wait to see you soon.